life becoming multiplanetary for the first time in the four and a half billion year history of Earth. I cannot emphasize this enough. This is the thing that we need to do. We must make life sustainably multiplanetary. Multi this is the goal we should strive for. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon, Game Nessa, Ghost Bank Jack, Godspeed, Bottom Dog. We want to inspire kids to say that, that one day they want to wear that uniform. They want to, they want to wear that spacesuit. And I think what, this, what today is about is, is reigniting the dream of space and getting, getting people fired up about the future from all walks of life, from all parts of the political spectrum in the United States and elsewhere should be really excited that this is a thing that is made by humans for humans. And it, it, it's just a, a great, exciting, inspiring day. And it's one of those like, one of those things that makes you glad to wake up in the morning. Well, I don't really think of uh, these things as all that audacious. Uh, they seem like uh, natural things to do. But not that I think you know everyone should be doing these things, but someone needs to do them. So if I see that, well, somebody's not doing this and maybe I could be helpful, uh, then, then, then I try to do something in that regard. Well, first of all, I'd say I actually think I, I, think I fear, feel fear quite strongly. Um, so it's not as though I just have the absence of fear. I, I feel it quite strongly. Um, but there, there are just times when something is important enough, you believe in it enough, that you, you do it in spite of the fear. History fundamentally bifurcates um, in, in one of two directions. Either we um, are a multi-planet species and out there exploring the stars, or we are a single planet species waiting around for some eventual extinction event. Constantly seek criticism. A well, a well thought out critique of whatever you're doing is as valuable as gold. Um, and you should seek that from everyone you can. You should take the approach that that you're wrong. Um, you know that, that that you, the entrepreneur, are wrong. Your goal is to be less wrong. Well, this is the culmination of a dream. This is a dream come true. In fact, it feels surreal. If you'd asked me when starting SpaceX if this would happen, I'd be like one percent, point one percent chance. I think this is true of anyone who's involved in you know, closely in the design of something. You just you know all the ways they can fail, um, and um, and that's like the sort of mental checklist that's scrolling through your mind. It's all the things that can 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 break. I mean, there's thousands of things that can go wrong, and everything has to go right. Like there have to be reasons that you get up in the morning and you want to live. Like, why do you want to live? What, what's the point? What, what inspires you? What, what do you love about the future? And if, if we're not out there, if the future does not include being out there among the stars uh, and being a multi-planet species, I find that, inc that it's incredibly depressing if that's not the future that we're going to have. Well, I think uh, certainly uh, you need to be very driven and have a high pain threshold. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard starting a company. I mean, you have to basically be prepared to work constantly, um, you know, from when you wake up to when you, when you go to sleep. Um, you have to be willing to deal with um, a lot of difficult problems and thorny problems. Um, you have to be w willing to deal with an enormous amount of stress. And you just got to push yourself super, super hard. I mean, I, I seem to have a, a high uh, innate uh, drive. Um, and that's been true even since I was a little kid. You know, I uh, really had a very strong drive. Did all sorts of risky things when I was a kid that I, like, why did I do those things? They're crazy. <laughs> uh, I care a lot about the truth of, of, of things and trying to understand the truth of things. I think so, I think that's important. Um, you know, if you're gonna come up with some solution, then the truth is really, really important. Crazy things can come true. 
because um, like, I, uh, he said like, I didn't really think this would work. I think I look at the future from a standpoint of, of the probabilities. It's like, it's like a branching stream of probabilities. And there are actions that we can take that affect those probabilities. Um, or that accelerate one thing or slow down another thing. I make, you know, introduce something new to the probability stream. The, the value of beauty and inspiration is, is very much underrated. But there, there are a lot of negative things in the world. There's a lot of terrible things that are happening all over the world, all the time. Uh, there are lots of problems that need to get solved. But the, life cannot just be about solving one miserable problem after another. Can't, that can't be the only thing. There need, to be, there need to be things that inspire you, that make you glad to, be, to wake up in the morning and be part of humanity. Earth is the cradle of humanity, but you cannot stay in the cradle forever. It is time to go forth, become a star-faring civilization, be out there among the stars, expand the scope and scale of human consciousness. I, I find that incredibly exciting. That makes me glad to be alive. I, I hope you feel the same way. People take too many things as, they assume too many things to be true without a sufficient basis in, 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 in that belief. Um, it's very important that people closely analyze what, what is supposed to be true. Try to say, let's, let's analyze things from first principles, not by, not, not by analogy or not by convention. I always had sort of a slight existential crisis because I was trying to figure out what, what does it all mean? Like what's the purpose of things? And I came to the conclusion that if, if we can advance the, 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 the knowledge of the world, if we can do things that expand the scope and, and, and scale of consciousness, then we're better able to ask the right questions and become more enlightened, and, and that's really the only way forward. And uh, this, this was against the advice of pretty much everyone I talked to. Um, one friend made me sit down and watch a bunch of videos of rockets blowing up. Let me tell you, he wasn't far wrong. Tough going there in the beginning, uh, because I'd never built anything physical. I mean, I'd built like little model rockets as a kid and that kind of thing, but um, I never had a company that built anything physical. So I had to kind of figure out how to, how to do all these things and, and bring together the right team of people. And, and so we, we, we did all that and, and then failed three times. I think also people tend to overweight risk um, on a personal level. Let's say you're young and you're just coming out of college or coming out of high school or whatever, the, what, what, do you, what do you risk? You know, you're not going to stop. People should be, be less risk averse when there's not much at risk. I wouldn't say I'm fearless. In fact, I, I think I, fear, I feel fear quite strongly. If what we're doing is, if what, you know, what I'm doing is, I think is important enough, then I just uh, override the fear. Try, trying to build a company and have it succeed is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. Sort of quite exciting for the first several months starting a company, and then, then reality sets in, things don't go as well as planned, customers aren't signing up, the technology or the product isn't working as well as you thought, and, um, and then that can sometimes be compounded by a recession. It can be very, very painful for several years. So I think, frankly, starting a company advise people to have a high pain tolerance. With this, like there are many more, more ways to fail than to succeed. Failure is not a not a big stigma. So it's like if you if you try hard and it doesn't work out, uh, that's okay. Learn from that and you know, do another company, and it's not a big deal. I, I think that the the thing that uh, drives me is that uh, I want to be able to think about the future and you know, feel good about that, to be inspired by what is likely to happen to look forward to the next day. 
the difference between really believing in your ideals and sticking sticking to them versus pursuing some unrealistic dream that doesn't actually have merit. And it's it's that is a it, that is a really difficult thing to to tell you. Can you tell the difference between those two things? Very rigorous um, in, in your self uh, self analysis. If you if you assume things are true by convention, which is actually what most people do. Um, then it's difficult to gain insight into what, how things can be bettered. You want to make sure that your, the underlying premises are valid and applicable and, and, you know, and, and then in reaching a conclusion that the conclusion you're reaching is necessarily driven by the underlying premises and the interconnection between those premises. When I was young, I, I uh, I didn't really know what I was going to do uh, when, I, when I got older. I, I read a quote from Arthur C. Clarke which said that a, um, a sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And, and that's really true. Um, if, you if you go back, say, 300 years, the things that we take for granted today uh, would be, you'd, you'd be burned at the stake for. I think it actually goes beyond that because there are many things that we take for granted today that weren't even imagined. In, in times past. They weren't even in the realm of magic. You had that third failure in a row. Did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. This is the first time in the four and a half billion year history of Earth that it's been possible to extend life beyond Earth. Before this, it was not possible. How long will this window be open? It may be open for a long time, or it may be open for a short time. I think we should, it, it would be wise to assume that it is open for a short time. Every waking hour, that's, that's the, the thing I would, I would say. Okay, if somebody else is working 50 hours and you're working 100, uh, you'll get twice as, done, as much done in the course of a year. Now is the time to take risks. So I would, I would encourage you to take risks now, do something bold. You won't regret it. Work like hell, I mean, you just have to put in you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. And I, and I like one of the most difficult choices I've ever faced uh, in life was, was in 2008. Maybe 30 million dollars left, or 30 or 40 million dollars left in 2008. I had two choices. I could put it all into one company, and then the other company would definitely die. Um, or split it between the two companies. And, but if I split it between the two companies, they both might die. And you know, when you put your blood, sweat, and tears into creating something, or building something, it's like a child. Am I going to let one starve to death? I can bring myself to do it. So I, put, I, I split the money between the two. Fortunately, thank goodness, uh, they both came through. When, when something is important enough, you do it even though flowers are not in your favor. We're doing these things that uh, seem unlikely to succeed, and we've been fortunate, and at least thus far, they have succeeded. Now, you guys are the, the magicians of the 21st century. You know, don't let anything hold you back. Imagination is, is the limit, and um, go out there and create some magic. <laughs>